right, welcome back to a mini episode of Coffee in a Combo podcast. Um, my name is Cameron Sweer, and I'm the one doing the mini sode today with my lovely dog here, Oslo. Say hello, buddy. No? Okay. Well, he's standing right in front of the mic, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so I thought I would start off by just saying thanks for hanging in there. Um, I know that things are a little different right now and we're kind of taking a bit of a break. Um, but honestly, it is so nice, you guys, because life has been super busy and I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, but this last weekend we had Serena's birthday party and so Dan and I saw each other for that and it's really nice to be able to just like be together and not have to be recording, I guess, necessarily. Um, because whenever she comes to town, we like make plans to record no matter what. So just knowing that we don't also, he's over here just like licking himself. Move out of the way, dude. I kid you not, you guys, I think he's about to sit right on top of my phone. Um, but yeah, it was super nice to be able to hang out and not be like, oh my gosh, we have to record. What are we going to record? And all of that stuff. So, um, first off, I wanted to tell you guys, okay, sorry, I'm going to move the phone here. I was trying to make this episode easy and I don't want to do a lot of editing. So also sit, sit, lay down, lay down. Okay. Whatever you guys, he's sitting. So, um, what my first thing I was going to say is, okay, for drinking today, right now I'm just drinking a drip coffee from Ethiopia with some heavy cream, but, um, a new drink that I've been getting at the coffee shop that I work at is called a honey almond latte and it's not on the menu and it's just something that we can make because we have almond extract. So, which I really like. I like that we're not using like a sugary almond syrup. So it's just a honey latte. So you have your honey. For those of you that are going to make it at home, you do like your honey and espresso. And then, um, I guess I could tell you like for like a 12 ounce latte, do about like 30 grams of honey. Um, so we weigh it there. I don't really know what it is like if it's not like in ounces or anything like that I guess you can figure it out um and then I just do a couple drops of almond extract because that stuff is like a little goes a long way so um I have had some with like four or five drops and it's like too much so just a couple drops of almond extract and then melt the honey espresso almond extract together then steam your milk and then add the milk on top and it is super delicious and I'm guessing you could just do like put the almond extract in other things too you know like if you just did like a raw sugar latte or some other sort of sweetener and then just add the almond extract I think that that would be probably really good so yeah I wanted to tell you guys about that because that's a new coffee and I highly recommend um uh, we also make a homemade pumpkin sauce like pretty much our own pumpkin spice latte there but like we make our own sauce and we make it with pumpkin puree and it is so good I don't know the recipe to that. I wish I did. And even if I did, I would not tell you guys because that would be bad. But um, that's super good. So if you guys are in the Sioux Falls area, I highly recommend the Charlie Brown. Or we also have a butterscotch latte right now um, on our fall menu. But yeah, so Thanksgiving is right around the corner. I'm getting really excited about that. I feel like, I can't remember if it was the last episode I recorded with Jenner or uh, a few before that. We were talking about how, like, we weren't in the fall mood and it wasn't feeling like fall and, like, all this stuff. And since then, we had a couple weeks of, like, gorgeous leaves, really pretty weather. It started to be, like, 50s. It was still, like, there'd be days where it was 60s, 70s, which is just super crazy for South Dakota. Um, but I, like, went on some fun fall walks. I've had a few more pumpkin spice lattes, you know. Um, been making soup every week. So I'm starting to get more into the fall vibes love it. What's really sad now is that, like, all of the leaves are gone off the trees. Hmm. So, everything is, like, dead. Um, don't love that part of fall, and it kind of makes you just want, like, the holidays to be here right away after all the leaves fall. At least that's my opinion on that. Um, okay, so life update. Also, if you guys hear anything, also brought me his toy, and he wants me to hold on to it while he's, like, chewing on it, so whatever. Um, He's my co-host for the day, so I guess he gets to do what he wants. Um, what was I going to tell you guys? Oh, life updates. So, I guess life update on Ozzy Boy. He's doing super good. Lately, his... So, he... We can let him outside, 
and he's fine. He doesn't, like, do anything. He doesn't run off, all that stuff. But lately, he has been wanting if there's another dog walking by. And we used to be able to be like, Ozzle, no. And he'd usually listen. Sometimes he wouldn't. And then it went to, like, 50-50, and we were, like, getting really annoyed with him. Um, And then this last week, there's this lady at our apartment complex who has a Great Dane, and she was walking her Great Dane, and um, Ozzo just takes off. And she was, like, across, like, two, like, far away, like, not just right across the street. She was, like, way over by, like, some mailboxes, and he just spotted her. And, um just takes off towards it and Brady and I were both outside with him and we're like both of us were calling for him and he wasn't listening to either of us and then Brady ran over to get it and she was like mad because apparently her dog is a rescue and doesn't do very good with other dogs and she's like you need to get that dog right now and then she's like he doesn't do good with other dogs and so that was not great that was kind of embarrassing so we drag him back and kind of give him a beating (laughs) not actually but we like smacked him and stuff And we, like, are not about, like, hitting your dog when he's doing something he shouldn't. We just tell him no and reward him when he's good. But we've been, like, that hasn't been working with this. So we thought maybe if we put the fear of God in him, he will listen. So I don't know because then it kind of happened again. But it happened with a friendlier dog. So I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do about that. Um, When we take him outside, he's leashed up for sure. But I want him to listen. So if you guys have any recommendations, slide into our DMs, text me, shoot me a message uh today on his walk we always take him over to the field and he gets to go off leash in the field and I took some treats with me and I just practiced like when he was off running around playing I'd say also come and when he came I give him a treat so just trying to reiterate that when we say come you come so that's our life to update with him uh, I've just been hanging out been in Sioux Falls lately the past few weekends which has actually been so nice uh I've been having this thing where on the weekends, like, Saturday's my cleaning, and, like, Brady and I kind of like to do something fun, like, maybe get brunch, go out to eat, go on a walk, we went to Great Bear the other day and, like, a little hike, um, and then Sunday, it's, like, all the cleaning and all that stuff is done, and after church, I don't know, we maybe do, like, a few little things, and then I take, like, a legit three-hour nap, and this has been my thing, like, the past three or four weeks, and I just look forward to it, and I, so I take my nap at, like, two or three, and I wake up at, like, six, and then we, like, watch a show and lounge on the couch, and then I go to bed again at, like, 8.39. And it has been amazing. I have been loving that. I feel like it just, like, gets me caught up on sleep and, like, ready to go for the week because uh, I we wake up at 5 on the weekdays and try to be in bed, like, be getting ready for bed at 8.30, like, be in bed at 9. Um, but sometimes it's, like, 10, and then I get only get, like, 7 hours of sleep, and I just, I'm learning my body requires so much sleep, like, nine hours of sleep a night would be perfect for me um and then maybe I wouldn't require a nap on the week but I love sleep I'd probably take a nap anyways um so that has been my new thing highly recommend if you can do that for those of you that have kids that might not be doable but you know if you don't have kids like me you highly recommend those long naps They're, they're amazing okay next life update this is my big big life update that I've been kind of waiting to not just say it right away at the beginning is I got a new job um super crazy I'd say maybe about a month ago I bet it was a month ago three weeks month ago I had someone text me and say hey Cameron um I got your phone number from your professor and told me like what professor gave her my phone number and it was one that was in my major so in the fashion studies and retail management major one of those main professors that I saw like every day um, she's like, I got your phone number. I work for um, Blowfish Shoe Company and um, Blowfish Shoes. I don't know why I said company. Blowfish Shoes. And we're looking for hiring a European sales and operations coordinator. And then also uh, kind of my assistant. It's like you're doing both of those things. Um, and it's a remote position, but uh, the company is based out of uh, LA. I live here in Sioux Falls, so like you can work from here in Sioux Falls um would you be interested and I was like oh my gosh because you guys know I'm freelancing so I have my freelancing and then I picked up this job at Cafe a a few months ago I think and to be honest like it's good I think one thing I've learned with the freelancing is it's going to take a lot of like word of mouth and like building up um clientele and there's then like 
two or three really good leads I've had and they've gotten back to me and like, yeah, we want to hire you, all this stuff. I like I've met with them in person, but now it's like once I send them like the package and everything with like my pricing plan and like they liked the pricing and everything, but then they like don't get the ball rolling and I like send follow up email. I'm like, hey, like how's this going? They're like still like thinking about things or what we're going to do. And then I just like don't hear anything back for them. And it's like been a month. And so those are all very possible clients. I feel like in the next year, they'll probably sign on, but it's like, okay, like I need to be paying, I need to be paying the bills. Like I need money. So, and she reached out to me. It was like, oh, like that sounds like an amazing opportunity, but also like I'm super, not super busy, but I'm busy with what I'm doing right now. Like each day is pretty full. So I was like, she asked, she's like, do you just want to get coffee? And I was like, sure, like we can just get coffee. So we meet up for coffee and we talk and she explains the position. And it sounds like it's just kind of a lot of, um, uh, what's the word? Keeping things organized and dealing with all of our, um, different countries. Like we have, I think about eight countries in Europe. So dealing with the countries in Europe and just like getting them their the shoes and just pretty much all of the like little nitty gritty, like, um, conversations and keeping stuff organized in excel that kind of stuff that's how I what I was told and they know that I've really only done like marketing and social media and they still wanted to work with me and I think I was like their only kind of prospect like she told me um it after this meeting she's like if you want to know more information as well stop chewing so loudly if you want to know more information on the job and take the next steps let me know like within the next few days or next week at the latest just because like we do need to get this position filled so I don't really think that they like had seen had talked to anybody else so I thought that was really cool that they just like took my professor's uh pretty much recommendation and like ran with it and the other reason I think that she recommended me well the main reason she recommended me is because Ray and I traveled in Europe like we studied abroad so that is if you guys are thinking about doing study abroad or any of you are in college I think it is a great opportunity, clearly opened this door for me that would not have been there if I would not have done that. So, um, very cool. So anyways, she tells me all this stuff and she's like, do you have any questions about the job? And I mean, she kind of made it seem like I'll learn more once I get into it. And I think that's any job. It's like, I don't know exactly what I'll be doing, but I'd love to train and figure it out as we go. And then she said also at this meeting, you will have the opportunity to travel to Europe. And like with all this COVID stuff, a lot of things are unknown. Like we were planning on going in January, but we're not going to be going in January probably. Like we're going to see. But um, she has traveled some and and she asked me, she's like, do you like to travel? Because like this job is going to be some traveling. And I was like, yes, I love to travel. And so we talked it through. Um, I I took it as like they go at least once a year, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's all up in the air. But then she's like, um, if you do take this position, and this is still the first meeting, she's like, if you do take this position, like, you're going to go to LA probably for a week at a time for about three months, like, uh, three times throughout three to four months. So I was like, oh, like, that sounds like so fun and cool. And because the COO is the one that's going to be training me on all of this European sales stuff, because he's the one who's been doing it because they're expanding. So this is kind of a new position. Like they haven't had someone doing this specifically. They've had people dealing with their UK sales stuff, but not like their European sales stuff. So, um, yeah. So then I got back to her and I said, I think this sounds awesome opportunity. Um, and like I said, I'm working remotely 830 to 530, uh, five days a week, all this stuff. Um, it's a job with like benefits and all that, which I don't have right now. And it's, you know, it's like a guaranteed income. It's a salaried. So that's really nice being able to have something, some money to rely on. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'd love to learn more. So then she's like, okay, well, we'll just have like a zoom call with the CEO and all of it. I think this is so funny because first off, when she said we're going to get coffee, I thought it was just, like, getting coffee to discuss the job. And she asked me questions, and she had, like, a piece of paper there. But it was pretty much an interview. Like, she asked me. It was nothing, like, intense and, like, the the intensity of, like, a real interview. Because I've done several interviews in the past few months. Well, like, this last summer. And it was nothing like that. But then later on, she, like, referred to it kind of as an interview. And then she's like, well, let's have a Zoom call with, like, the COO. And she's like, just to talk things over. And then when she scheduled it, she scheduled like a Google calendar meeting and it said interview with Cameron. And I was like, so then that made me nervous, but it was like so chill. Like they asked me questions, but really like they were just getting to know me and they, 
asked me things about like when I studied abroad like how did you get around like what country was your favorite like fun things like that so and then I learned more more in depth during that meeting um and so yeah I she offered me the job literally two hours after that meeting and I waited through the weekend and talked things over with Brady and everything and pretty much knew I was gonna take it but um yeah then I went ahead and accepted it um I think I'm telling you guys it's been like a week since I accepted this position and so I start the last week of November which is really nice I get to um get Thanksgiving out of the way but right away my last week we are going to be flying to LA and so that's super exciting um so yeah follow me keep in touch with everything I'll be doing um at Cameron Swear on Instagram so just a little plug in there um Ozzy's gonna miss me so much when I'm gone aren't you buddy he hasn't had to well no I guess he stayed with Kaylin I totally forgot about that he stayed with my brother for like three or four nights so but he's gonna be so confused as to why his mom is not here and just Brady because I'm his favorite like by a lot you guys whenever Brady and I get home he comes and says hi to me or like when Brady will get home and I'm not with him he looks for me and and then he can't find me and then he'll find me like okay fine I'll say hi to you um so yeah that is my huge life update um, I'm gonna be super busy. Oh, I guess I should say. So then I went ahead and told my cafe manager, which made me really sad. And like, I just I love it there. And I love the people there. But like, this is just such a great opportunity. So I'll be staying there until I start my new job. And I'm going to still be taking or ha- you, not taking on new clients necessarily, but I'm still going to be doing my freelancing. So keeping all the clients I do have, we'll see how that goes. Um, Because my and my life well, this is, like, what I think. Someday when I have kids and a family, I'd love to be freelancing. But who knows? Like, this position might be, like, amazing and it's working from home. And who knows? Maybe I'll stay with that. But my goal is to keep, like, all my freelancing clients and keep doing that. Um, I don't really know how getting new clients will go. Depends on how much work it is, I guess. Because uh, I'm going to be pretty busy. I am going to pretty much be doing my um, freelancing stuff on the side. So, like, on the weekends and in the evenings. So... Yeah, that's going to be a lot, but I'm really excited for the opportunities that this is going to open up. Um, okay, I think that's the it, the end of my life update. So, okay, moving in to, I just wanted to talk slightly about fashion trends because I just love fashion. You guys know that. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, some fall fashion trends, which I know Jenna and I talked about this literally a couple weeks ago. But, hey, I'm the one doing this episode and that's something I really want to talk about. So... Pretty much what I, all I really want to tell you guys is I ordered these Platform Converse shoes and I'm so excited about them. Um, I literally think they're supposed to arrive in the mail today. So if they get here, I'll post on the story right after because I'm going to like put this episode live today and then I'll post those if I get them, whenever I get them. And I'm so excited about them. Like a year ago, I had seen some and I kind of wanted them, but I was like, eh, like when will I really wear them? I don't know. So I didn't get them. But it's just kind of been seeing more and more. And with the bigger jean, wide leg jean trend, I feel like they look so cute with that. And I've kind of gotten to the point where I, I've told you guys before, but I do not wear skinny jeans anymore. And I think like with straight or wide leg jeans, they look so cute. And I feel like sometimes it's harder. Like I'm so used to wearing shoes that look good with skinny jeans. So it's harder to know what to wear with my newer jeans. And I'm like, these shoes would look so good with like everything. So I ordered them um and very excited about them um I'm just obsessed with the platform anything platform um the platform trend and I pretty much have to resist buying everything platform because at some point like it's not gonna all be in and I don't want all my shoes to be platform shoes and then all of a sudden it's just like not it so yeah like my last pair of Doc Martens were not platform and I really wanted to buy a platform um, so yes, I absolutely have been loving that trend. And then I've been loving the chocolate brown trend, which maybe I've said this before. So just kind of been building that up and buying some new pieces. Okay, another little fun announcement slash having to do with fashion trends. I had this company reach out to me called Junk Gold. Excuse me, I just burped. Um, called Junk Gold and it's all recycled pieces. Um and they like will make bundles so like you select what kind of like 
trend you're looking for like it can be like the adventurer or like the minimalist chic or like they have like different like options and then you fill out a survey and then you say like what your size is like what your waist measurements like everything um and then they will send you a bundle like a whole outfit and so anyways they reached out to me and were like hey we'd love to have you rep us and it's like a three-month plan program and then after that they like decide if they want to keep me on or not and um so I fill it out and they send me this stuff and then I have like a code to share anyways pretty much just like a little mini influencer for them but their stuff is so cute and I think they're based out of somewhere in um Tennessee I don't know if it was Nashville or somewhere in Tennessee super cool like they send all of their packaging was so cute and so yeah all the items are thrifted and I got like I can't remember it was like minimalist something I got these really cute like wide leg pants I got this this is what made me think of this this chocolate brown like silk um blouse I got a whole really cute little zebra purse that I've posted on my main page a few times you guys have probably seen it um anyways super cute stuff and I have a discount code so if you guys want to get anything from them um you can use my code Cameron just all capital art capital letters on any of their bundles and you'll get some money off um so yeah you guys should do that because then I get to they see that people are using my code and I'll get to stay with them because if people don't use my code they'll probably <laughs> cut me so that's sad so go use it um but that has been fun being able to do that and create some content for them and I get to continue doing that the next few months um what else is I going to talk about fashion trends I don't even know maybe that was it oh I've gotten a few new shackets well love the shacket um trend I feel like it's starting to get a little bit too much like I've got maybe I have like three I don't have too many I've got like three really cute ones but I feel like it's just I kind of like it when my fashion's unique you know or my style's unique and I feel like everyone's getting on that so um yeah that I don't know okay next thing oh okay the next thing I had written down is oh my gosh you guys the whole astral world thing is crazy and so I follow this girl called house and habit uh like that's her buy or that's her instagram handle i don't know what her actual name is but look her up house and habit and she's a reporter and i don't know that she's conservative or liberal but she just like reports on different like things that are kind of like controversial so that's super interesting like she'll like she she oh my gosh she did like a whole segment on the gabby um patino case and like people were sending in like tips and like she it was just really interesting and she almost gets like into the, like the conspiracy theory type stuff okay pause real fast you guys Oslo is laying by me and it is so freaking cute and he's like sighing okay so anyways um yeah so she felt like she, she did that whole anyways got super deep into everything it's so interesting and now she's covering this whole astral world and Travis Scott thing and so I don't know if you guys have heard about it but if you haven't you should go look it up after this go follow her or google it but so Travis Scott was one of the performers at Astro World, which is just like a music festival. And um, during his performance, eight people died because they were like trampled or I don't know if they all died from being trampled or what. But I, I guess what happened is first off, he oversold out the concert. So it sold out. And then he came out and was like, oh, yeah, we need to get you wild ones. He literally said, like, I want the wild ones in here. I want like the super crazy people. So we're going to sell more tickets. And it was sold 5,000 more than he was supposed to. Um, anyways, got, yeah, got it. So it was, like, super full. And then during his concerts, I guess he's known for just, like, being super crazy. Like, one time, I think it was back in 2015. You, I watched all this on her story, and she has, like, all of the, like, news articles linked and everything. He told there was somebody that climbed up a pole during his concert, and he encouraged them to jump off of it. Um, and then they broke both their legs and were paralyzed. And so he's just known for doing like super crazy things. He'll encourage like riot, like when people, I guess I've never had this experience. I've only been to like Christian concert festivals, LOL. So I guess like when things get super like packed and crazy and it gets like too hot, people can't breathe. And so pretty much they start passing out. So people were starting to pass out at Astral World, and this has been known to happen at other, some of his other concerts. Um, anyways, people were passing out and having cardiac arrest and like they were having to get EMTs in there and people were screaming for help and like it shows videos of people screaming for help and he just keeps going on at the concert and then it shows another part where um, some security or some guy comes up on stage like stops the concert he's like what's going on why are we stopping and whispers and pretty much telling him like you need to like get everybody to calm down and like people are like 
dying and he shoots him off and he's like we're gonna keep going and um then he posted on his personal Instagram and I went and saw this one myself it was like I'm so sorry like I didn't know any of this was going on and then I think it's Kylie his girlfriend or wife who know I don't keep up with all of them and she was like we didn't know any of this was happening during the concert we had never let that happen and it's like dude someone literally came up and told you and you like pushed them away um and I guess he's been arrested also in the past for encouraging riots and for people I don't know if people have died but like crazy things have happened at his concert And then on top of all of this, all of his like signage and promotion of his last album is like super like demonic. And so like just like super creepy things. And um, this girl, House and Habit, was like getting into it. And like he started the concert off with like this um, burning, it was like a burning bird thing like happening. Like a bird wasn't actually burning, but like pretty much like they made it look like this big bird was like burning like over top of the stage and it was like a symbol it was all like goes back to very like demonic evil things and he was and he's been doing this at or I don't know if he has been doing this but he was doing that at this concert and his whole album like cover is like you should look at it it like looks like a demon like it is freaky um so anyways yeah so much to dive into that she I was literally looking at her stuff or you could just keep looking if she's still posting about it um Actually, should probably save it all to a little story. So, a story highlight. So, you should go look at that. The Travis Scott um, Astro World concert. Super crazy. I just didn't know if you guys had heard about this or if you guys had an opinion on it. I was just wanting to know. If not, I guess I'm just educating you. Um, okay. Now, I just remembered the very last thing I wanted to talk about is Netflix shows. So, I watched um, the Squid Games and I am obsessed obsessed you guys if you don't know what it is I'll give you a quick rundown of like the first episode so that way it doesn't give away too much pretty much um all of these like undercover people in like red suits who I think are just like normal people living their um day-to-day lives but they get like they work for the squid games I guess I don't even know how to say it and so they recruit all of these people that are like in debt and not pretty much not doing well in life to come play the the squid games and they pretty much just get them to come um and say like we're gonna play like six rounds of these games and if you make it all the way to the end you win a ton of money and if you don't like everyone people will be eliminated every game and when they say people be eliminated you think like oh yeah you're just eliminated like from the round you're done with the game well the first game comes out and they play red light green light and i mean if you even move a flinch um you get shot, you get eliminated, you dead. So comes out like half the people die in the first round. People are freaking out. And um, yeah, that's how it pretty much starts off. And then they have six rounds of these games and it just turns into like pure chaos. And like pretty much even the uh, like in- contestants try to like, they start like killing each other too. Like, cause they all like live in these big room on um, have bunk beds and they all live there together and so things just get super crazy um it's based out of it's like a korean film and so the the words and we turned on the like u.s i don't know not u.s but we turned on the english and so the words do not necessarily line up with the english but you could watch it in um korean and then have the subtitles on or like we put on uh English and had the subtitles on so that was it wasn't it was fine it was really not that bad um anyways highly recommend you guys so good okay and then the other tv show that we have been watching which I might be maybe I've talked about this before is Money Heist and that one's based out of Spain so they speak Spanish the whole time um but that one is so good too so good and then lastly is You and we just started the last season of You on like your second episode also come here I'm almost done you're a bad co-host. So, um, yeah, that's been good. Watching all of these very violent TV shows. I'm not a violent person. So, yeah, we love that for me. But, honestly, you guys, I think that's a wrap for this mini episode. I apparently could talk a lot without Jenna because, wow, look at this. Um, Thanks so much for hanging in there during this little season break. I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something or I gave you some sort of inspiration to go waste your time with watching or waste your money with purchasing items yay 
Um, so yeah, have a great rest of your week and we'll have another one of these really soon. Goodbye.